walk with me. Oh, give thanks unto the I am, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the I am say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the hands of from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way and they found no city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. When they cried unto the I am in their trouble, he delivered them out of their distress and he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. At Psalms chapter 107 verses one through seven. Deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have sway over the thoughts of men's hearts and let them not lead me astray from thee, my God. Establish thou me in my seat forever that we go not astray from henceforth and forevermore. Jubilees chapter 12 and verse 20. Yes, yes, yes. We thank God for you, you, and you. And we give God the glory for all things. Yes, we do. Yes, and also we want to say with a hand clap of praise, we want to thank God for you, you, and you. We want to thank God for those of you who've been with us since the beginning. And those of you who are been with us, should I say, from then and here on and there's about. And also those of you that have just subscribed, we thank God for you also. And we thank God for those of you who are about to subscribe. Yes, calling those things as though they are, even though they're not. Yes. So, therefore, we're still in the book of Jasher. We're about to wind it up in a few more chapters. We're about to wind it up. And it's just, I mean, just to think about today's events and news headlines. Some are blessing. You know, it's always a good thing to hear about those who have been left destitute that they're prospering but it's sad to hear that those that have caused them to be destitute are still trying to bring them down to bring themselves up this is the way that the world is this is the way the satans are i mean they selfish they have a they have an agenda they hate they hate mankind from the jealousy of the beginning even to the jealousy until now and it's more, it's more behooving of the Most High to use these entities to uh, test the metal of mankind. Those who would say they want to be identified with them. And he proves them. He proves them. And it shows them up. It shows all of us up. Whether we be real or whether we be phony or fake. Yes. And also we... Uh, Going back to the book of Jasher, I think we're in, the, we're in chapter 84. Yes, chapter 84. I think there's 90 chapters in this book. This is a book or a scroll. It's not a letter. No, it's not a letter at all. Not a letter in the least. And uh, what it is is that uh, in chapter 83, we found out the people had dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. They was there and that's where they came to after the Red Sea ordeal. And now we're in verse 1 of chapter 84. Now this is an intriguing chapter. Let us continue. Uh, cha verse 1 of chapter 84. Jubilees chapter 84 and verse 1. At that time Korah the son of Jetzer the son of Kehath the son of Levi. Now this is the youth of the tribe of Levi. He ought to have had some Respect for his near kinsmen. Took many men of the children of Israel, and they rose up and quarreled with Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation. And the I am was angry with them. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up with their houses and all belonging to them and all the men belonging to Korah. The Most High is an undefeatable entity. You cannot defeat them. How can you defeat anything that made you? Except for mankind and his robots. Yes, the robots can defeat mankind. But no way you can defeat the creator of all things, even those things of the robots. He made all the minerals and all the things that the robots consist of comes out of the earth or was from the earth. And verse 3, And after this, the I am made people to round, 
go around about the way of Mount Seir for a long time. Now, you, the agenda of the Most High of this was to let him wander until those who have angered him at the mount where Moses had destroyed the first set of commandments that the Most High has, writ has written with his finger as a commemorative, as a rememorative, or a Deuteronomy, as they would put it, to remember. And they would read these things yearly, they would read these things on and off. Some would copy them as they heard them, some would copy them and give them out. But they had the law, they knew the law. Now at that time the I am said unto Moses, provoke not a war against the children of Esau. He commanded them then, for I will not give you anything belonging to them as much as the sole of the foot could tread upon, for I have given Mount Seir for an inheritance to Esau. Now, you have to realize Esau is, he is a son of Isaac, son of Abram. Yes, he is a son of Isaac, and he is Jacob's brother. He says, no, you're not going to have your brother's stuff. I don't care how much you, you got all this other stuff. Some of us don't understand that. But we know Esau, he, he has his ways. He's going to do what he's going to do. And God's got it. God's got his number. God's got what he's going to do to Esau. Therefore did the children of Esau fight against the children of Seir in former times, as we have read. And the I Am had delivered the children of Seir into the hands of the children of Esau and destroyed them from before them. And the children of Esau dwelt in their stead unto this day. Therefore the I am said unto the children of Israel, Fight not against the children of Esau, your brethren. No, that's your brethren, okay? For nothing in their land belongs to you. I didn't give this to you. This wasn't allotted to you. But, that you, but you may find food of them for money and eat it. In other words, be civil. Give money for whatever you eat. Make sure the land is clean when you leave, leave it. And God gives them specific instructions on how to urinate and defecate in the land that the land will not stink. Yes. Even most militaries use this today, even in some of their just general handbooks. In other words, in your 66 books, you will find that God says you will dig one foot down, and I mean, to the equivalent of a one foot down, one foot wide, and one foot across. And you will defecate in this, and you will cover it. Now, you have to realize, all these thousands of people that have passed through the land and had to defecate or do their thing, they had to go by this. You wouldn't find, I mean, if they were going by the law of the Most High, you wouldn't find not any dung on top of, these, on top of the earth. But when they went to do these things, it was left intact. And you can imagine what came up after that, nothing but vegetation. <laughs> because of the dung dug so deep. One foot deep is pretty deep. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's, it's nothing that would smell out of the earth because the earth usually would take it and reconstitute it back into the soil that it was. Now, he says now, but you may fight buy food of them for money and eat it, and you may buy water of them for money and drink it. And the children of Israel did according to the word of the I am. They were obedient. Yes, that's good. Verse 8, and the children of Israel went about the wilderness going around about the way of Mount Sinai for a long time and touched not the children of Esau and they continued in that district for 19 years now that's almost that's over half of what of the span that God gave him and at that time this is what happened died teen, died Latinus king of the children of Chittim now we heard about him in the 45th year of his reign which is the 40, 14th year of the children of Israel departing departure from Egypt yes and they buried him in his place where he had built for himself in the land of Chittim. And Abimus reigned in his place for 38 years. And the children of Israel passed the boundary of the children of Esau in those days at the end of 19 years. And they came and passed the road of the wilderness of Moab. Now we know what Moab, Moabites are. You read about the story of how the Moabites began. It's in your 66 books. I don't need to go into that. But anyway, the I am said to Moses, Besiege not Moab. Don't, don't do nothing to the Moabites. And do not fight against them, for I will give you nothing in their land. In other words, they, they are part of your kinsmen also. And the children of Israel passed the road of the wilderness of Moab.
for 19 years and they did not fight against them. And in the 36th year of the children of Israel's departing from Egypt, the I am smote the heart of Sion, king of the Amorites, and he waged war and went forth to fight against the children of Moab. See, God already had a plan. Oh, don't worry about them. I got you. See, the same thing that's happening. If you would see the setup of the world today and you know where the children of Jacob have come from, this is the setup of God. You got to see God in everything, even in calamity, war, whatever. You have to see God. If you don't see God, then you're just as blind. You don't know. You, you, some of you got this Jesus mentality that they have made up. And you've become just foolish. Period. God is not foolish. God is a God of war. God is a God of compassion. God is a God of love and fairness. For fairness is love. Yes. Although it might not seem as though it's love to those, when I say, if you kill this man, this man shall be killed or demised or deleted, it's only fair. But the world is not fair in that way, that that man that deleted someone without a shadow of a doubt and without bias, he is allowed to live or she is allowed to live. And that is the problem. God will judge every judge, every lawmaker. He will judge you throughout the world. He, he's already judged you. Your sentence is, in, is inevitable. Until you change your ways, you are already judged and sentenced. It's already written. It's already done. So all we can do is look up and smile and say this thief and his, the one that approved of his murders, the murderers that he approved of and allowed to live even a day after they have committed that found to be guilty of that murder or whatever God's got them because they're real cheap ways of getting rid of a murderer I mean they, they found a cheap way to get rid of the murdered or the one murdered they had a cheap way of doing it whether by hideous means or I mean it wasn't no taxpayers this is a money making scheme for different entities all you have to do is just simply delete them period if they have been found guilty and without a shadow of a doubt, and without bias and without prejudice, or should I say prejudging them because of the color of their skin or because of their status and their financial status or social status, but that everyone is one under the law. There's neither great nor poor nor rich nor bond nor free. The law is equal to everyone. But this is not the case in this world. It's not the case at all. For the world has become wicked. Even they were wicked way before now. Now, let's continue. And, and in the 36th year of the children of Israel departed from Egypt, he smote the king, the heart of King Sion. See, God is greater than men's hearts. You have to learn this. Someone say, Oh, you put witchery upon them, you put juju on them. No, 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 no. God is greater than your heart. He can put a mindset on you. He can give you a mind to build things and what he wants to see what the children of men do with it. Put a mind of war on nations to belittle and besiege the other nations. He can bring one up and put one down is what he was talking about. Just like you find people on the continent, some can build elaborate things, but yet it's not time yet for these things to become ramp, or should I say mass produced on the earth. God has a time for everything. But he gives you that idea for a reason to develop and to understand and to know these things because you're going to find out a lot of these nations that have been ruling in the past, they're going down. I mean, if it's the will of God, I don't mind going down. I don't mind. I mean, it, the process of death is going to be one thing, but in my spirit, no, I do not mind because this has been a wicked place, very wicked. And for those who decide they want to follow the Most High, hey, that is so good. But we don't mind going, those who understand and know the Most High don't mind. If it's just your will, oh God, that I should go and perish with these, I know that my end shall be good if I keep your commandments, statutes, ordinances, and laws. But theirs will be evil because they decided they were the best and they did not even heed the warnings of the previous empires, Babylon, Persia, Grecia, Rome, I mean even now 
all of these, the Spanish, the Portuguese, and all that they did, God brought them all down. And they're going down even further. But sometimes God will harden our hearts just like he did with the children of Egypt or Mizraim. He hardened their hearts to the point where they had to suffer shame. And even to this day, Mizraim suffers shame. Big shame. And have, there is no remedy for them except for they keep the law, statutes, ordinances. And you keep listening to Mizraim. You keep listening to a lot of stuff that they do. It's not good. But you follow God as dear children, and you're going to be all right. But either way, now let's continue. And Sion sent messengers, in verse 15, to Bor, the son of Genus, the son of Balaam, counselor to the king of Egypt. Oh, this is, well, this is, this is evil in itself. And to Balaam, his son, to curse Moab. They sent, this man, this Balaam is of age. From what we read, this guy's got to be over 120-something years old. Over. Because he is, Balaam is older, he, he was the one that would cause, wanted to cause Moses as a toddler to be deleted. Now God even will preserve the wicked. You wonder, why are they living so long? Why are, there's a reason God does this. But your thing is to understand and know God. That is your, that's all God asks you to do, understand and know me. Once you understand at least understand you will begin to worship him as the almighty power the almighty of all the, the creator of all you will understand and know these things that it, it might be delivered into the hands of Sion and the messengers went forth to Beor the son of Janus and Balaam his son from Pethor in Mesopotamia so Beor and Balaam, his son, came to the city of Sihon, and they cursed Moab and the, their king in the presence of Sihon, king of the Amorites. So Sihon went out with his whole army, and he went to Moab and fought against them, and he subdued them, and the I am delivered them into his hands, and Sihon slew the king of Moab. This was by God's... He, he, I don't, want, I don't want you to, no blood on your hands right now, Israel. You just keep going. You don't mess with Moab. I got him. In verse 18, And Sion took all the cities of Moab in battle, and he also took Heshbon from them, for Heshbon was one of the cities Moab, of Moab, and Sion placed his princes and his nobles in Heshbon, and Heshbon belonged, belonged to Sion in those days. Therefore the parable speakers, Beor and Balaam, his son uttered these words saying, Come unto Heshbon, the city of Sihon, will be built and established. Woe to thee, Moab, thou art lost, O people of Kamosh. This is some type of God. And behold, it is written upon the book of the law of God. Now there is a book of the law of God. Where is it? The book of the law. And when Sihon had conquered Moab, he played guards in the city. Now the law had already been written, but God had to reiterate it because these books were lost. For some reason, people knew of it, but they, it was lost. And when Sion had conquered Moab and he placed guards in the city, which he had taken from Moab, and a considerable number of children of Moab fell into battle into the hands of Sion, he made a great capture of them, sons and daughters. He slew their king. So Sion turned back to his own land. The book of the law. See, this is why I say though, the New Testament is very much fake. It's been doctored, doctored, and doctored. Now, apparently there may be a man that was born that time. But they fixed it up. There were many men that fit the description of what they... There were other men, I'll put it that way, that fit the description of what they have described as their Christ at that time. Now how that come, I don't know. And just as I read it again, when you're reading Daniel, the ninth chapter, it talks about the 70 weeks of Daniel. But that last week, what makes me know the whole thing has been doctored or false at, at, at most, is the fact that God, when God says there's 70 weeks, just like he gave 70 years for the children of Israel to come out of but what did, did he defer that last year? No. 
In other words, if there were 70 weeks, how come we're still here? How come the earth is still going? So apparently the New Testament is null and void for that one reason. And then I can show you other reasons why the New Testament is null and void. Everything you can find in there has been talked. And you can say these scholars who have written this stuff or who have went over this stuff were very skillful. They could take things to make it sound like, you know, we can, I can, you can take things. You look how they made the movie Star Wars and different movies that uh, like Russell Crowe and come up with the words and all these things. Men know how to doctor. Demons know how to doctor. And they know how to sway the minds of men. Yes, they do. These things are very cra crafty. The only way you can even decipher these things is through the law, statutes, ordinance. And then the first chapter of Psalms tell you how you can feed anything. Blessed is the man that standeth not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. But his delight is in the law, is what he says. And on his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be as a tree planted by the rivers. Yes, this is where you cannot be moved. You cannot be moved by no Jesus, no New Testament, no Old Testament stuff that they have put all in. And it just it's just something that you, you, you have to really understand. The law. Understand it. Know it. Even if you rememorize it, I don't have that good memory, but even if you can rememorize it, rememorize the law. I ain't talking about the whole Bible. You don't need to rememorize the whole, just the law itself will help you and aid you in your walk with the Most High and will win his favor towards you because in that you will know even the heart of the Most High. Now, Let's continue. We're going to wrap it up in a little bit. I'm trying to expedite time because I'm trying to eventually get it down to 20 minutes again because some of these platforms are acting quite strange with the way they are doing things. Now, it says, At the time the children of Israel passed from the road of the wilderness of Moab, I'm in 23, Verse 23, and returned and surrounded the wilderness of Edom. Yeah, that's the children of Esau. So the whole congregation came to the wilderness of Sin in the first month and of the 40th year of their departure from Egypt. And the children of Israel dwelt there in Kadesh, a holy place, of the wilderness of Sin. And Miriam died there and she was buried there. And at that time, see, Miriam was the one that complained against Moses and his wife. And also Aaron, but Aaron, he repented, both of them repented, but I mean, God even, a woman has no place in that a a area, neither did Aaron, but Aaron has, he has his judgment coming, not God's not fair, now thus says thy brother Israel, let me pass, I pray thee, through the land, this is, a, this is the, Mo this is what Moses sent to the messengers with the sent messengers to Hadai king of Edom saying thus saith thy brothers no he didn't say thus saith the Lord like some of you Christians will call oh thus saith the Lord I send fire down the rain use a lie in your breast tank but either way he says thus says thy brother this is old English in other words your brother is saying I, I, I want to say to you your brother Israel saying, let me pass, I pray you, or I ask you, through thy land. And we will not pass through field nor, or vineyard. We will not drink the water of the well. We will walk in the king's road. This is being cordial. This is being respectful. And Edom said to him, thou shalt not pass through. And all of this, he said, we're not going to touch nothing. You wouldn't even know we've been through this land. Pass through my country. And Edom went forth to meet the children of Israel with a mighty people. That's just like those of you in the, on the country of Africa. I mean, you're going, when the borders do open up, and you're going to other people's land, into their territories, make sure you're neat and tidy. Even if they're dirty, make sure around you, you are cordial, you are nice, 
You do not try to break in on their traditions and things that they do. I mean, even though you might not eat the pork or eat things that they eat, that they can respect. You tell them, I do not eat this, but I will respect you. This is it. And you pass through as though you've never been there. And this is the way of the children of Israel. Should be the way of Igbo or, and the other tribes that go by the name of the Most High. Now, he said, I'm not going to let you through, in verse 26. And Edom went forth to meet the children of Israel with a mighty people. He's ready to battle. And the children of Esau refused to let the children of Israel pass through. And these people are almost like sodomites. But the sodomites are like our judicial system and law enforcement system here in the U.S. today. It didn't used to be like this. I mean, they had some weird laws and weird ways and... In other words, they, they, they had so many crazy ways that would accuse you even though they are the one did the crime. And this has been a long time. This has been. Now the children of Esau refused to let the children of Israel pass through their land, so the Israelites removed from them and fought not against them because of the, what the I am said to them. Now before this, the I am had commanded the children of Israel, saying, You shall not fight against the children of Esau. Therefore the Israelites removed and from them did not fight against them. So the children of Israel departed from Kadesh and all the people came to the Mount Hor. And at that time the I am said to Moses, tell thy brother Aaron that he shall die here. Now see here's his judgment. He's not going to live long. He, see because of what he did God is still angry. God still has, hey you're going to have to pay for this that you did. But I'm strict here. He did not come into the land which I he shall not come into the land which I have given to the children of Israel. And Aaron went up and at the command of the I am to the Mount Hor in the fortieth year in the fifth month in the first day of the month, and Aaron was one hundred and twenty three years old. Now Moses was a little younger than Aaron. Now when he died in Mount Horn and with that, see, God has a way. He's going to get you. You can think you're getting away with murder. You can get away with all kinds of things because of the judge that you know or the law enforcement officer that might cover up your mess. Not only you, but him too, because he has bared false witness that would get another demised. See, God got it all under control. You think the world is going to get away because they're not the children of Israel and they, we don't have to obey the law because we're just, oh, that's wrong. My friend, you are greatly deceived. This law has been ever since the beginning, since Adam and Eve, since Noah and his three sons, Shem, Japheth, and Ham. Yes, this law has been ever since then and you have no escape. The only escape you have in this is that you don't do it or that you come clean. And those of you that have done the thing as far as murder or raping a person from the child to a woman, even another man, there is no, there is no forgiveness. You might as well just, God is just allowing you to live. He's having mercy on you enough to say, well, you live out your days and this is enough. Because those who allowed you to live that know you have done such a thing, they shall even suffer greater than you. See, this is before God, not man. You see, this is why I say most of us are pagans. We walk by sight. Though we do not see God, we think God does not see us. It's like walking in the night. No one sees what I do. That's why I do it. In other words, I do it because our laws are for me or I look like the people that write our laws and they're not going to convict me and I'm good. Well, I got money and I'm of good stature. I have friends that are in high places. So I get away with what I want to get away with. You might in this life. But it's not going to go well with you. Because there's a time God has for every man and woman and child. Yes, I did say child. Some of you try to call children that in their teens or whatever. They're not children. Once they come to the age where they understand what they're doing, not children anymore. 
that lost their innocence. And some of you have helped them lose their innocence by what you do. But either way, with all this, I'm going to say, peace. Walk with me.